Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren Nash. I'm currently the Warning Coordination Meteorologist at the National Weather Service, New Orleans, Baton Rouge. Here at the National Weather Service and with all meteorologists and forecasters across the country, across the world, we have such an important job for you all when it comes to forecasting the weather. Weather impacts every single thing you do every day. You wake up, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy? Or do you need to make a decision on severe weather, tornadoes, hurricanes, flash flooding, landslides? This impacts your life, impacts your every day. We also wanna make this societal connection because we're not just making sure that you know what the high is tomorrow. We're making sure that you understand it and that you know what to do. We don't wanna just tell you there's a hurricane coming. We want to be able to help you make the right decision for your house and yourself and your family. But we don't do it alone. We have to have sensors to collect weather data. We have to know what's happening right now. If the weather model and the computer doesn't know what the temperature is right now, doesn't know what the pressure is, then it cannot create calculations to determine what's going to happen in five days. But it's not a perfect science. The closer we can get to that, the closer we can get to 100% observations, observing every storm, every cloud, the better we can do with our forecast. Hurricanes are one of the most deadly and damaging weather phenomenon that we have in the country and in the world. And that's really because they have so many different parts to them. We have storm surge, we have strong winds, tornadoes, and most important is flash flooding. We hear a lot about wind strength and storm surge, but that freshwater flooding is really what kills the most people during an event. So you can imagine meteorologists, forecasters, the National Weather Service has put a lot of work into forecasting and communicating those hurricanes. One of the things that we as forecasters and meteorologists use, probably one of the biggest things we use is these computer simulations. So we actually take weather models is what we call them. They're a bunch of math, there are a bunch of calculations that these computers make on our current observations. So as an example, if the model knows that it's 80 degrees out right now, then it can say, I know what day it is, I know what time of year it is, I know it's cloudy, and therefore, if I know it's 80 right now, I can calculate that rate of change between now and six hours from now, and then the model can tell us what that temperature is gonna be in six hours. That's a very simplified view. Now imagine if it rained and the model didn't catch that, then the model wouldn't know that the temperature may actually be lower in six hours than what it forecasts. So that's why it's so important to know what's happening right now and getting that into that weather model. As some of you guys saw in the weather balloon video, that is me when I was just getting into my career at the New York City Weather Forecast Office. So another sensor that we use to measure hurricanes and forecast hurricanes is called a dropson. They fall to the earth using a parachute and they take measurements of temperature, pressure, winds, humidity, and they continuously send that data back to the aircraft. Now dropsons today are most used in our hurricane hunters. These are the aircrafts that go out and fly through the hurricanes. They take all sorts of measurements but those drop signs, they are constantly dropping all the way through that hurricane. These sensors are actually one of the most important sensors we have to determine what that wind speed in a hurricane is right now. And again, if we know what that wind speed is right now, then we can better forecast what that wind speed will be in the future. As we've talked about a little bit, one of the biggest thing that forecasting hinges on is these computer models, these computer simulations for weather systems. And to do that, you need a lot of computer science concepts. You need to be able to learn how to write that code, to write that language that lets those weather models create those outputs. One of the things I wish I would have done in college is take more computer science courses. I didn't realize how integrated that is into meteorology. Imagine that you're going to school and you finish your computer science studies and you get to be a part of creating this research and doing this research and looking through all of this data. And at the end of it, you find a new way to forecast for hurricanes or you find a better way to see a storm surge. And through that research, it gets put into these new weather models and we do better forecasting and then you can directly save lives. It's one of the coolest things about being a meteorologist and being a forecaster and being a 
a computer science researcher in this field is what you do and what you create has a direct impact on saving lives and protecting property. And it's one of the reasons that almost everybody in meteorology loves what we do and continue to do what we do.